So now I'm gonna go on to Delta since I want I finished rewatching the Delta TV series recently. Um, uh, for what the second time all the way through? I think it's second or third time. Um, no, third time. Um, now I'm using this picture for the video because this is exactly why Macross Delta sucks. The TV series, anyway. Um. Think about this. You have five singers that you have to develop character arcs for. You have five pilots with Delta Squad you have to develop. You have five, you have what, six pilots for the, uh, the, the Windermere Squadron. I forgot their name. Then you have the what the 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 boy who becomes king later and then his father before that plus Lloyd in there plus Ernest in there you know it in like Chuck's family um and the, there's just too much going on and the character development seriously suffers and <clears throat> it you know, it's focused on Hayate and Furea for the most part, with Mikumo playing a major role too, but it's just that they, the side characters get almost no attention. Um, the, especially, the thing that always drove me crazy about, and this is kind of a, a slight at Do You Remember Love as well, is, but not as much, because at least Do You Remember Love did put a few extra scenes in there with them is the Macross operators the the three girls so in in Do You Remember Love it's Shami, Vanessa and Kim which they have a couple really they're there's a really funny scene at the beginning and then they they you know they show them at the end and stuff like that but um they because of all the other characters they get zero attention on them and <clears throat> they're just kind of there you know nothing about them you have to look at you know like source books to even learn anything really about them because you don't even hear their names in the stinking tv series and they just put like their names in the credits at the end and you're like who who is who um th this is the biggest issue with Macross Delta is too many characters within 26 episodes to develop. It, it, if there was ever a series that should have gone as long or even nearly as long as like let's say the original TV series or Macross 7, it was Delta. Macross 7 went too long and I will I will admit to that. Macross 7 went way too long. But Delta didn't have enough like it and this is where I will actually for once in my life um credit Macross Frontier. Macross Frontier didn't have a whole lot of, you know, important side characters, you know. Um yeah, Michel, yeah, Duca, yeah, Ozma, which they're all like main players, and of course, Aruto, Shiri, Duranka are like the main three. But like the the captain of Macross Quarter is there, um, and you get a little bit of depth of him. Um, even in the movies, you actually get some decent character depth with him, which is actually really surprising. Um, he's one of the few side characters that actually gets a decent amount of, uh, you know attention paid to them in the um uh in the movies um the this is where you know delta going with so many characters in such a short span of time damages the entire storyline and I'm not going to talk about the movies with this because the movies are a completely separate issue. Um, especially because I don't want to talk about the second movie until I get my DVD. 
and rewatch it and, you know, like cry my eyes out and all that stuff. And I want to have, you know, a fresh mind because it's been months since I saw it at the movie theater. Um, I still remember most of it because I saw it three times, but I don't want to... I want to focus on the TV series for Delta. Um, um, now, the... They did the same thing as they did with Frontier. They took the first 13 episodes and they made it kind of one little arc and then they took the second 13 and had a second little arc with it. And although it wasn't as pronounced as it was in Frontier and that's what I hate the most about Macross Frontier TV series um, is that they cut it right in the middle and then the story just goes off on a different tangent and I'm just like, you know, screw this. With Delta, it's not as bad. But when you have all of these characters that you have to develop and you have to talk about, and you don't, you don't even like the the fact that Dana is from Zora, which is a nod to Macross Dynamite Seven. Okay, um, the fact that you have Dana and she's from that planet, and you don't talk about the fact that she's from that planet. And you're just looking at her and you're looking at her, you know, little, you know, relationship with Makina. Um, it, you know, that's important character development that you should talk about in the TV series. And they don't talk about it everywhere, anywhere. Even in the movie, they don't talk about it. They, they don't mention she's from Zora. Which really bothers me because Zora was an interesting thing that actually led to more, you know, the Bajura thing in Macross Frontiers. Dynamite 7, as bad as it is, is actually very important to the lore of Macross, okay? And there's there's connections to Frontier that are vitally important. But you don't talk about Dana's background that she's from Zora, which Macross 7 fans would have been happy to see. You know, people like me, we'd be like, oh, cool, she's from Zora, which after I watched the TV series, I went back and learned... And, and read about the character in source material, then I'm like, that's cool. But you didn't say that in the TV series. And you didn't mention it anywhere. Um, you just mentioned that she got, you know, like, arrested for hacking and then they threw her into to working for them instead of being a hacker against them, right? You don't... It just... It, 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 there's just so much missing to it. Um... And, you know, Hayate is kind of... In the TV series, he's a better character, I think, um, than in the movies. Um, I think that he... He does have an... He does seem like Aruto too much in the first few episodes. Though. He's just kind of like wandering around, nothing special. He's not, you know, invested in anything. And then all of a sudden, oh, here's Freya, and then he gets, you know, dragged along into this, into this whole mess, you know. Um, it, it just, you know, <clears throat> they, they didn't do enough with so many of the characters, and all I will say, even in, even the first time I watched Delta. Um, the one character I always stood behind was Mirage. Not only because she's the granddaughter of Max and Miria, because, of course, you know, genus fanboy, but, um, the, the thing about Mirage is that, like, sans the stupid forced love triangle that really made no stinking sense whatsoever in this show, I'm glad that they didn't continue it in the second movie because the, the love triangle just it, it was a complete it was forced it didn't go anywhere and it was a complete waste of time it, it you know the tv series really pushed that whole like even like that that whole you know gotta have all three main things of macross you know songs valkyries and love triangles and the love triangle was just done so terribly in delta they they it just it was awful um but Mirage is a character when she's, you know, like, worried. Like, you, you hear, like, people saying, like, how, like, 
she's like what they say Ojo Chang or something which is kind of like she's kind of like special because you know her grandparents are who they are right and I think that you know they they wrote her well in the sense that she's always um she always feels like she's in the shadow of her grandparents and you can tell like she's you know <coughs> it, it really affects her this is something that you don't see much in the first movie second movie when I get to do my review of that for in English when I get my DVDs you hear my opinions on that then um, but as for the TV series I thought she was the best written character I thought that she um, I mean because I, I think a lot of people knowing that she's you know Maximiria's granddaughter would be you know uh, if they did her wrong people get really mad at her and I like the fact that she's very much different than all of the other genus characters that have appeared in Macross um, she's you know Max has kind of an ego because he, he realizes he's a genius and he's a, he's a mass he's an ace pilot and he's got this massive ego about that he's very soft-spoken but he knows he's you know hot shit right um, he even in Macross 7 he has a line in 7 that's just amazing um, <clears throat> but um, with and like Miria is so hot blooded and just like you know because she's full melt trendy and stuff and, and then how Mylene takes after her mother quite a bit um, but she also has some she also kind of like takes after daddy max a little bit but mirage being very soft spoken being very like she not having confidence in herself um like even though her mother um miranda was a had, like owned a piloting school and was always around planes and, and all this stuff like um the the fact that she is like just doesn't have the, the self-confidence she always feels like she's in the shadow of her grandparents and the fact that people are constantly throwing it in her face um they you know uh and she she really i think is the best written character um in in all of it um all the windermere characters are kind of meh borg can go piss off i can't stand him um and the one character i will say i absolutely despise for multiple reasons i absolutely hate him is messer i absolutely hate that character i like I, I, his, like, I hate the voice actor, and there's other reasons why I hate the voice actor as well, but, and I didn't realize that he was also the voice actor that they, they threw Sasaki Nozomi away, Nozomi, Nozomi away for, to play Hathaway in the stupid fake Gundam movies that came out recently, um, that don't exist, um, later I realized that, I'm like, then I, I realized, now I know I hate this guy so much. He he has no ability to show emotion in his voice acting whatsoever. He's a terrible voice actor, and the and putting him as the character of Messer, just no. It, 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 he's awful. Just awful, 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 terrible. Um, I cannot stand the character of Messer. Um, he's the one character I will say I absolutely hate. Period. I can't stand him um now when i because i've been bashing the tv show so much i'll i'll talk about some of the good things okay um protoculture lore the protoculture lore in delta while it doesn't start really coming out until the second half of the show which is when it gets really interesting um 
the 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 lore of protoculture on Windermere and the whole backstory to Mikumo and what Mikumo is and you know it's it's just it's amazing how could they do the protoculture lore of this show so good and write the characters so horribly just I, I, I can't it, it, it it boggles the mind how poorly the characters were written in comparison to how well the lore was written. You know, like, when you have Belger Stone coming in and, you know, doing the, 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 the explanations in the episode Eternal Songs, and then I think also in episode 24? Yes, 24, 25, one of the two. Um, where he's talking about the, the location of Lady M and when Lady M started becoming active... Um, that detail is so important. And then the fact that you look at the Windermere, um, the, the temple that they're in, in, or whatever, where the, the homie here is seeing Kazenuta, right? Um, the, the fact that the drawings for Hoshino Taite is very similar to and it looks almost like the same as Tori no Hito from Macra Zero. I like after watching it a couple more times, it really dawned on me, especially watching Zero and then watching Delta immediately after that. Or no, I think I watched Delta and then I watched Zero after I can't remember which one, um, off the top of my head. Just the the recent rewatchings I did. Um I think I did Delta and then Zero and then Do you remember love? I think that's what I did. But starting to notice those little things, that it makes it all the more interesting, and it makes Zero much more interesting. It makes you like really enjoy Zero much more, because like, hey, that looks same. Well, let's do some theory crafting on this. Let's think about this. You know, um, it, it's really interesting. Um, now, I have to admit that as much as I've bashed the Delta TV series, after seeing the second movie, it has clouded my judgment of the show. Because when I watched it through the first time, I was like, what in the hell is this garbage? This is awful. This can't be Macross. However, the second movie did affect my opinion rewatching the TV series again now. Um it and rewatching Zero has also affected my opinion of the TV series and being more invested in the protoculture lore now since nobody wants to talk about the deep lore of the series really in English anyway. Um there's plenty of it in Japanese, nothing in English. So that's why I make a point to talk a lot about the protoculture here. Um, but I will say that in the context of knowing the second movie, sans the fact that this guy right here in the TV series dies, but he's alive in the second movie. So that means hit the events that lead to his death in the... Uh, TV series are not canon. Um, the the whole them sneaking onto Windermere in the TV series near the end is a completely is completely uh, retconned due to both the first and second Delta movies. <coughs> um, now the 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 war seven years ago in 2060 is still canon. The issue is, is they, in the movie, they don't talk about who drops the, the, the bomb that destroys that city. And they don't really go into Hayate's father's, um, details very much. Um, especially in, they, they mention him in the second movie in passing, but, um, <clears throat> but the whole, you know, 
Freya got her little, you know, music player from Hayate's dad is that's up in the air whether that's like a canon or not now. Um but um uh the <coughs> there was a lot of interesting things that came of the TV series through protoculture, like through the whole Shino Tai Day and how they connect it all back to the Bajra and you know and and you know the events of Matt Cross Frontier become well the specifically the second movie become more important because of Delta. Um uh, the um in the, the, the fact that Mikomo is actually a clone of the protoculture race. Yes, spoiler. But people should know that by now if they just look into it a little bit. Um, but, and, and the fact that Lady M was behind it. Of course, we don't learn who Lady M is until the second TV series. Or second movie, sorry. Um, which I already did a video on Lady M about the lore of Lady M. <clears throat> but they actually revive a pers a, a protoculture being basically and this is really really interesting stuff and but i have to say that the um the tv series for the protoculture lore is very good for the characters is meh I like some of the stuff that goes with Mirage a little bit more. The the first movie doesn't really, you know, um, uh, get into her, you know, like people, you know, talking about her her grandparents very much. Of course, then then in the second movie, Granddaddy comes to join in and and makes her an infinitely better character. I think Mirage is. And going to end up being probably the best character in Macross Delta because of the second movie and the events of the second movie. They it, it changes everything. Um and it makes her even better. Um I still think Mirage is the best character in Delta, even in the context with the second movie, if I think about that. But in just the, the T V series itself, you need to watch it for the lore. You watch the to, to get the, the details to learn who the characters are and then you watch the uh, the first movie because if you watch the first movie without watching the TV series you're gonna be completely lost and like at least with Frontier and I'll, I'll give credit to Macross Frontier for this at least with the movies you can get by without having to watch the TV series very much um, Delta you because of the sheer number of, of key characters like all shoved to the front um, you need to watch a TV series to at least know who the characters are and then you go back and watch the movie okay okay this is the canon of how the war went and basically that's how you have to look at it um, otherwise you'll be completely confused by the first Delta movie and you know I, I watched the first Delta movie <clears throat> right before I went to go see the um, the second movie so that I could be at least prepared for it and um, because I had already watched the TV series once I was like okay I'm not going to watch the TV series I'll just watch the movie and then I'll go um, now but the thing is is that had I not watched the TV series first I would have thought Macross Delta was the worst thing I've ever seen um and uh, like when it comes to the first movie so the tv series is actually kind of required watching where i don't say that about frontier like i said in in my my watch order video i think i uploaded that um the um i if you watch delta you must watch a tv series first and then watch the first movie and then wait two months until people start you know putting like torrents out for the second movie um 
honestly. Um, Delta is... If you watch it by itself without linking it to the other series and the other protoculture stuff and just take it as a, as a series by itself, it's absolutely god-awful. Um, out... And if you take it within the context of the events of the second movie, like I do now because I saw the second movie, it it, it definitely colors your view of the TV series. It, it makes it a little easier to watch because you know what's going to happen at the end of the second movie. You enjoy it a little bit more, but without the second movie... Macross Delta is a very weak Macross series. Um, it's the 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 songs are kind of meh. There's maybe like two or three songs. Then of course the second movie you have Yami Kude and the three really badass songs. <laughs> but um, I. I really think that if you watch Delta, you'll start to see the connections in the canon to 2 a little bit too. So I definitely recommend watching 2 and then watching Delta after that. So that you, at least you know, you have in your mind, it's fresh in your mind what happens in 2. So that you can make the connections to what's going on with Delta, which is 23 years beforehand. So um, I, I don't... If you want to know all the deep lore about Macross, you want to be able to watch all Macross, go ahead and watch Delta. Um, watch Delta TV series and watch the movie to prepare for the second movie because the second movie is amazing. <clears throat> but other than that, and also for what I said about Belger Stone at the end of the series, a few of the things that he says have very, very massive consequences to the second movie. So you need to know what he says in those near the end of the show. So, um, I, I don't recommend it. I say it's required viewing if you want to understand the lore of Macross. Um, I, there, there's like, because there's just too many other connections to the other series. And then there's the connections to two that are sprinkled in there, but you have to look very carefully to find them. <coughs> um... That'll help you um, understand why Macross 2 is canon. And it'll also maybe make it more interesting to watch the Frontier movies. Because what happens in the, in the second Frontier movie is referenced heavily in Delta. Both in TV series and the movie. In both movies. So, um, I, I don't know if I can recommend it. Watch it just to watch it. But if you need, if you want the protoculture lore, it's a must watch. You you can't avoid it without. You can't understand all of the protoculture lore without watching Delta because of Mikumo and Windermere. Um, so that's my view of the TV series of Delta. Um, I know I did make some comparisons to the movie and to the movies and stuff, but I'm not you know reviewing the movie in and of itself. This is strictly my opinions on the TV series. Um, the first half drags. The second half, when they get into the lore stuff, is really interesting. But that doesn't change the fact that most of the characters are boring and the love triangle is completely forced. And the fact that love triangle is so forced, you can tell it's forced and it doesn't make any sense. So... Um, that's my view of Macross Delta TV series. I will do a specific Macross Delta movie review video um, for the first movie and the second movie, but I'll, I'll save those to later because I want to talk about other Macross series. Um, I want to talk about... Um, I want to get to Plus because, you know... Um, people like plus and i'm gonna hurt their feelings so <clears throat> anyway i think the next video i'm gonna do is a lore video and i'm gonna 
and that'll be related to um, some of the timeline stuff. Um, I'm going to start doing the timeline. Um, the official timeline that I have within uh, my little uh, like source magazine thingy here. So um, that'll be all for this video and see you in the next Macross video.